This is Cosmic Cooper, radio host of Blue Ark Station. Please enjoy these sensual beats while we float through space this evening. It's currently 2200 hours, and it's another... We interrupt this scheduled broadcast for a breaking news update from the Sticky Buttons podcast. All right, man. So it has, it's been a minute, and I have not talked to you in like two weeks. So what, what have you been up to, man? It has been a while. Uh, we've been just playing some 2K, playing some 2K a while here. Still on that same, same vibe. School stuff. Keep you had midterms. Stuff. Midterms, didn't you? It just took like three midterms uh, uh, since I last spoke to you. And um, that's rough. That was, it was pretty rough stuff. I, I've got to, I've got to enroll for classes starting later this week. So you know, I've got a lot on my plate right now. But yeah. well, I think that's only such a pain, like enrolling for the next semester. Yeah. I wish, I wish they made that a little bit more easy or a little bit easier, because it almost feels like it's like, oh, like this is like the worst time to do this. Right. It's like right in midterms, and like my head is just in the books, and then I gotta like take my head out of that for a second and just like look into the future and just think about like what am I gonna be taking? Some of these classes, I don't even know if I'm gonna pass this semester. So it's like I have been there, man. The way I always, the way I planned it, I was always like, I'm just gonna plan on having this if I pass. And then I was like, if I don't pass, then I guess I'll just try and add that one that I didn't pass. But I was like in my head, I was like, oh, like it'll just be an easier one. I, I think you'll pass, man. I never, I don't think I ever had a, ever had one where I wasn't able to pull it through at the end. Oh, I got faith in you, man. That's a, that's the thing though. It's already happened to me twice and going to a public university. It's just a lot less handholding and it's more of like, here, here's what you have to do. Now go do it. I don't know. This is just something I'm not used to, but it's a challenge that I'm enjoying because it's preparing me for the, for the workforce. Yeah, definitely. So do you not have like a, like an advisor or somebody that you can talk to? <laughs> not really, no. Oh, that's it's, such a, it's a public university. It's like 40,000 plus students. There's not really like the resources to like, you know, kind of, ha- you know, have someone be there for me. I can email like department heads and stuff and like try and do that, which I, I do sometimes. I will email someone who's like in the department and can answer a question that I have that, you know, like I've met before, which is really important to like network and just make connections everywhere you go yeah definitely that's surprising to me i mean i'll have to i'll have to ask some other grads that i know from my school but i also went to a public u and it was like around like thirty nine thousand. wow and i had an advisor i mean like it was like in the business building so like i was like a business advisor um that she, so she only advised business students so I wonder if there's like a resource like that for you, like something like in your, de- in your department or in your specific school. Yeah, I'm on the, I'm actually on the, right now. I'm a general undergrad. I'm on the cusp of like getting accepted into either the school of science or the school of business. And I think gotcha. once I, I am trying to get into the school of business, uh, once I do get in, I think there will be like those resources for me there. Yeah. I, you know, if, I mean, not to make this about this, but if I were, if I were you, I would almost, reach out to or see if there is somebody from the like both schools and just see if you can have like a, a talk with them you know and I mean like even the the receptionists that aren't in that aren't the advisors I think they have like a a general base knowledge of some of that stuff as well Definitely. yeah man, navigating higher ed can be a lot like the, just the bureaucracy of it fucking sucks it's a challenge in and of itself but it's I I'm the type of person and video games gave me this trait. It was like anything that's like challenging or, you know, just out of like my realm, just out of my comfort zone. I really enjoy it. I revel in it. And, you know, I, I love overcoming those, those, uh, those challenges. Way to, way to bring it back, man. Way to bring it back on topic. I love that. Yeah. Dude, I actually, I've been, so in these past two weeks, I've been thinking about some things. I've been thinking about some fighting games. You're, really? you're big into fighting games, aren't you? Yeah, I've played, uh, you know, some Dragon Ball, a bunch of Dragon Ball games. I've played some Mortal Kombat, um, a little bit of Tekken here and there. Super Smash Bros, by far my favorite fighting game. So I, I got a question for that, like on that specifically. Could you tell me what the difference is between Super Smash Brawl and Super Smash Melee? Okay. 
Um, so Super Smash Melee, I believe, was just a um, a disc for the Nintendo GameCube. I, I think that was just to smash. Because the Super Smash Bros. like franchise, they have a mm-hmm. few titles, and I think Melee is just a, like a Which title. is like one specific title? Yeah, and then Brawl, I believe, is the title for the Wii U. And then for now, for the yeah. Switch, we have, I think, is Super Smash Bros. I think they just took it back. Now it's like just the OG Super Smash Bros. So the reason I've been on that like train of thought is because I got a Switch, man. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, thanks, man. I pulled the trig, bro. Um, I actually, I, in the moment, I, I called you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of I'll lay, lay this story down because I, I think we had some connection issues and I wasn't able to tell you the whole thing when I was there. Uh, so I was visiting my girl and we were out in Delaware and like something that is, that is cool about Delaware um, that is not cool for my pocketbook is <laughs> they don't have sales taxes. So I'm always like, Oh, like I probably shouldn't buy that. I'm like, but I don't have to pay taxes on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, and it's, it's kind of like, it's not necessarily as much like the, Oh, like I'm just saving like a little bit of money. It's also like the, I don't have to pay pay the government when I when I buy this, and that makes me right. feel good. <laughs> no, right, and honestly, you should. I mean, that's a great point, especially for for gamers. You know, for every penny is important, if, especially if you want to play the titles that are coming out six months from now. You know. Yeah, I actually, that's you know, that's really important, and I actually think that I want to bring it back to that because um, I was just wanting to talk a little bit about like the accessibility in gaming. Um, so I got like this whole story about getting a switch but but like yeah it is it is expensive to like buy these things and like games and games in general so i definitely want to want to swoop back around but i'm i'm all right this is it's kind of like it's kind of a funny story so we like we call up a couple game stops um we're looking at like targets and like i kind of like decided it was like a friday and i got like paid on like that wednesday and i was like i'm I'm gonna pull the trigger i'm gonna do it I'm, i'm gonna buy it and I like decided like 5.30 on Friday, I was like, I'm, I'm going to buy this. Like it's happening. Like there's like, I'm like, it's happening. Like there's, it's going to happen. <laughs> I was just like, cause I was like, I've been like talking myself like out of it, like in and out of it, like so much. You believed it. I know. And I like literally had to like give myself like a pep talk. Like I just did. <laughs> um, and then, so like, and then we went to uh, my girl's, uh, her friend's house and they had like a little cheese board and some wine and then. Uh, we were like, all right, this Walmart has one that's like 30 minutes away. Like, let's let's hop in the car and let's go. So then we went there and I, so I kind of like, I was wanting to get the gray one, which I know is kind of, I don't, I think that might be a little bit of a hot take. I think a lot of people want the the blue and blue and red one. Which one do you have? I have the alternate colored one, but that was only because I got it on launch day. Gotcha. And they didn't have the gray one i i would go for the gray just because of functionality and it'll be a little less noticeable when it gets dirty yeah that's yeah i think that i talked to you about that and i think that i was really like that's that's kind of what i was thinking too but i I actually i I think that just from like looking around like i think that the the red and blue ones are actually the more popular and those are the ones that people want yeah they definitely sell a lot more yeah but so so when i got there at this walmart they didn't have they didn't have the the black ones, but I was like, fuck it, man. Like no sales tax. Like I'm still going to do it. They had the animal crossing one, which, which is cool. Cause I know that that's going to like sell out and like people have been waiting for that for a while. Yeah. But I just, I have like no connection to the, um, franchise to the franchise. Yeah. And like, I don't, I mean, I don't know if I, if I'd like it, we can talk about animal crossing a little bit later, but I was just kind of like, I was like, I don't know. Like I, I was kind of just was like, I don't know if I'm going to get it now, but then I was ultimately like, no, like no sales tax. Like I said, I was going to get it fucking want it like i'm getting it now because there's also like so in this in this period of time that we're living in switches have been hard to come by in the in the covid oh, yeah. quarantine um so they they're they are hard to come by i could have ordered one directly from nintendo that option has been available for about a month but i would i would have to pay sales tax on it unless i sent it to my girlfriend's parents house which is in delaware and i was like i don't really want to do that it's like shipping well i mean like also that but then i was like then it's going to get there and then I'm not going to have it. And it's like, then I'm going to have to go like get a train ticket out there or like, they're going to have to mail it back to me. And I'm like, I think it's going to like net out anyways, even if I do that. Uh, so anyways, I like where I'm at this Walmart and I'm like, I finally like, I get somebody like get it out for me. 
and he i shit you not man he's like he looks at me he's like my birthday's coming up what <laughs> i know i was like oh yeah and he's like you want to buy me one <laughs> i was like no bro <laughs> they're expensive <laughs> Um, but I was like, whatever, like, I was like, all right, man, like, let's just laugh about this. Like, it's an experience, whatever. Um, and I was like, yeah, man, I think I'm going to get, uh, I hadn't decided, I was going to get two games and I hadn't decided on the second one yet, but I had decided I was going to get Mario Kart. So I was like, how about you, can you grab that Mario Kart for me? And he spent like five minutes, like jingling with the keys, trying to get like the thing open. And he was finally like, man, I, I can't get this open. And I was like, I was like, well, like, I'm not going to, like, I'm going to like, just can you like open the set up in the second one like the one next to it and he was like yeah i can do that and he like opened it and then he like kind of like reached in he's like my, my arms aren't long enough i can't get it for you and i was like well do you want me to get it <laughs> and he was like yeah so i'm like in walmart and i like i feel like i'm like bouldering man i feel like i'm like i'm like crawling in my whole shoulder like my neck is like pressed up against the glass i'm like reaching in and i like grab it with, like a t like my index finger and my middle finger and i'm able to like pull it out I was like, what the heck is this? Like, I'm not really making me work for it. You're really making uh, you work that Mario Kart. I know, man. And then I was like, um, I was talking to the guy and I was like, yo, man, I think I'm going to get a second set of Joy-Cons too. Because in my head, I was like, this way I can like play Mario Kart with four people. Of course. And my girls in her parents' house, like they might all want to play. Like, this will be fun. Like, we could all do this tonight. And he was like, oh, dude, I don't think you should get a second set. Like, it comes with one. And I was like, well, I mean, like for four people. And he's like, I think you need a second switch for, for four controllers. And I was like, I don't know if that's true. But then I also like, I was like, I don't know. So I was like, oh man, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but yeah, it's not true. You, you could just get two. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I looked up later and I figured you would confirm, but I'm like, yeah, like you don't need, the only thing is like, you can't charge four at a time on the one switch. Right. Which I mean, like, that's not a big deal. But so then like, I don't know, like things just like weren't, working like they weren't aligning and then I was but I was like no sales tax <laughs> um so then I got finally I was like all right man like I don't know like what do you think like should I get the second controller or not like that's what I said to the guy and I'm like no sales tax though right and he's like what are you talking about I'm like isn't there no sales tax in tax in Delaware he's like you're not in Delaware bro and I was like what <laughs> and he's like you're in Maryland uh, and I was like uh, I was like well I don't want it then and I was like I just walked away and I was like, I, I mean, like, I was like so mad because I was like, I was like, you I thought you were, I thought I was kidding, man. And I, oh, it was, <laughs> I was like, this close, but I was like, it's just not right. Like, something's not right. It's not working. It's not worth it. And then I just ended up, I ended up just like walking. I was really disappointed. And then I just like slept on it for a night. And then I was like, I'm going to call the GameStop that's like 10 minutes away. They hooked me up. They not only had a gray one, but they had a gray used one, which like in my mind, I was like, I'd rather get a used like one, just like, so, so like if somebody was learning to buy like a new switch, they can have that experience. And I am also like, it's not that big a deal for me. And like, I'm also like big on like the reusable train, trying to be eco-friendly yeah, and stuff. And environment. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it just worked out like so good. And then I also like, also with the used thing, I've heard like rumors that there's going to be like a new pro like a Nintendo Switch Pro that like might come out in like the first of the year, or, like after Christmas or something, which I don't know if they'll do that. Like they're just like rumors, like nothing's confirmed. Like I don't need, like it might, it probably, I mean, who knows? It might not happen, but like even still, I was like, I was like, I don't need it. I just, I want to get the used one for a lot of reasons. So then like, it just like worked out perfect. And then like, I was able to get a pro membership at GameStop and I got like $10 off that purchase because like, you get ten dollars off when you sign up so you have to pay fifteen dollars you have to pay fifteen dollars to become a pro member so i got like ten dollars off right off the bat and then they had like a like a event going on where if you spend 300 or more you get like 30 dollars off but you have to like wait 24 hours so on my next game that i get i'm gonna get 30 dollars off which is like great so i got ten dollars off the switch so i'm gonna pay like 260 something for it like maybe maybe not even that and then I got Mario Kart. Uh, I got I got Mario Kart new, but like again, like no sales tax. And then the second game that I got was Breath of the Wild. Ooh. And they had this like cool like deal going on that day 
to where like I would I like if I bought Breath of the Wild, I got this like sticker pack like for my Switch. So it's like a sticker that goes on the back of the Switch, sticker that goes on the Joy Cons, like a screen protector, and then like stickers for the dock. And oh. like little things that go on the buttons too on the on like the joysticks. Yeah. And they have like that like uh, cool eye looking thing that looks like a T. Oh man. So it's here. I'll I'm, I'll pull it up right now. I'll show you. Okay. Cause it's cool. Uh, he has the switch right next to him, guys. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check out that like sticker. It's uh, I don't really. Know. Do you know what these oh, things are that called? That is sick. Um, I do know what those are called. It's not coming to me right now, but yeah. Yeah, they're like the. They look like um, like centipede thing or like. Oh. But they have yeah. look like they have a bell on top. Which also, I can't fight these things in the game. Like, I get fucked up by these constantly. I also, I don't think I'm playing it right. <laughs> Are you not? What, why do you not think you're playing it right? <laughs> um, just because I've only, so I've only, I don't even think I've played it like an hour yet. It's cool. I, I really am enjoying it. It's, is it hard? No, I mean, not necessarily. I just, so I've, I've also like, I've never really played a Zelda game. So, like, these things are just, like, sunken into the ground, and you can, like, search them, and you'll find, like, an ancient screw or, like, something like that. Um, there's a couple other things that I think they're random that you can, like, find, like, an ancient shaft or something like that, and they're, like, parts. And it's just, like, kind of says, like, oh, like, you might be able to use this later. And I was, like, that's cool. Like, I'm, I think it would be cool to, like, have, like, those things that you find in these, like, abandoned things, like, matter later in the game. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be cool but I mean who knows so I'm yeah I think it's so cool because like you can just you can go anywhere like and like if there's like a, a wall you can just climb right up it and I think that's so cool like from like a game mechanic kind of thing like if there's a tree I can just go climb the tree no yeah and, like, that is so cool um, I'm definitely like really enjoying it right now um, but I have not so like I said like I haven't really put that much time into it I'm still fighting these goblins with like the the clubs that they drop and I've got like two swords but I'm like I don't want to use them because everything breaks right away so I'm like if I'm just like fucking up like a goblin like I don't want to waste my traveler's sword right which I think is like a bakabon club or something yeah 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 I have like a a bakabon club yeah so I'm just using those right now it's cool I've got like two or three shields I've done so okay so there's like this old man and he says that I can have his glider to get off this like plateau. Yeah. But I have to like do four shrines. So I've done two of the shrines and I like have the other two marked Um, on like one, one of the shrines I noticed it was like kind of high up and I was like, Oh, like I'm going to go up into the mountains and kind of like walk around. Cause like you can, I was like, I'm going to take like the the long way and do like a scenic route kind of thing. But then I died because of the cold and I couldn't. Uh, Yeah. I like, got, yeah, I like got too far up and I was just like, man, I don't know. I don't know if I should like go back down. And then I was like, I can't find my way back down. So I died. And I was the also great, like, go ahead, go ahead. The great plateau. That's mm-hmm. like the beginning. And you gotta, you gotta get these four shrines. You gotta go to these four shrines, get these like tablets so that mm-hmm. you can get that glider and move on. Dude, that's the part that I also have not moved past. Not believe it or not. I have Bro. not moved How past long have you played the game? I've been, I've had it now for, since release date, but my uncle like played past that part and he would tell me about it. I've Dude, never, we're like at the same spot then. I've never done it myself. I've never moved on past that part myself. Dude, that could, this could be the first game that we like play together and talk about on the show. It could be. It really could be because once I move past that plateau, well, I don't know where there is to go. I know, me neither, man. It's it's cool. I'm really enjoying this so far. And I also feel like I got all these stickers that I got to see it through. I got to put some serious got it. You got to see it through. And honestly, that's a game that you're – once you get past, like, a certain point, like, the ball is just going to start rolling down the hill and you're not going to be able to stop, like, just playing. So. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm kind of scared to get into it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, the mechanic of it being so realistic and stuff. Definitely it really like, is, man. It's cool. You can spend a lot of time on that game. It reminds me a lot of like Red Dead Redemption, something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, dude, his his like Link's whole like get up, like he's got a badass earring. He's got long hair. It makes me want to grow my hair back out, dude. Yeah, Link Link is really he's flexing. Flexing. <laughs> that 
I love that you can just like walk around in your boxers too. Yeah. <laughs> you just do whatever like you want. I know. Oh, that is cool. I mean, yeah, man. You mentioned how it's like Red Dead. How, did you play the first and second Red Dead or just the I I've only got to watch people play Red Dead, the first one growing up, because my parents would never like let me play those titles really young. But once I became of age or like once I, you know, could get someone to go into a GameStop and buy a title for me. I got a Red Dead, and yeah, the first one I played was Red Dead 2. It's a super fun game. Have you beaten that one? I haven't beaten it. No. Dude, I, I mean, I, I don't blame you, man. They're so long. I think that, I think that's like, I mean, like, I think it can take you like 100 to 300 hours to like complete that story. If you, if you had to guess, like what, what game would you say has taken the most amount of your hours? What game have you devoted the most hours to? <sighs> Ooh. Like as a franchise or like a game specifically? Let's go with let's go with game, like a title, a title specifically. I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna answer this in three ways. Okay. So there's like a game that took me a very long time to beat. Like I like started it. I would just like play a little bit here, a little bit there, and like it just took me like a long time to like actually like beat the storyline. And that probably lasted like what well, lasted a while, probably a couple years. Um, and that would have been Far Cry Three. Oh, that's a great one. That's a gem. I, oh man, the one that I spent the most time on, I actually, I wouldn't even know. I, I would say definitely the franchise that I've spent the most time on because like whenever I look at my like playtime, I'm always like, how the fuck is that even possible? It's Pokemon. Okay. It's like I can just, like, I'll look down at my save file and be like, oh, I put 50 some hours into this. Oh, wow. It feels like nothing. That's a close second for me. Yeah. Oh God. I would, I would probably say, oh God, I don't, I'll have to, I'll have to do some research. I'll have to do, cause I think there's a way I can look at my, look at my Xbox and find that out. There is another, oh gosh. Now I'm thinking about like multiplayers and I've probably put, oh, I've probably put so much time into like Battlefront 2, Battlefront 1. Man, I played too many games. <laughs> <laughs> cause there's also like, despite like how long you play it, which one like keeps you fulfilled the longest. Yeah. So let me ask you that. Which which one did you like play the longest, but like you feel the most fulfilled when you play and like feel like no time has passed? Those two are the same for me. The okay. one that I played the longest and I feel the most fulfilled, put the most hours into, that's Skyrim. Skyrim oh, is just a universe that I just fell in love with. It was when my dad first bought me an Xbox 360, I was like 12 years old. And um, that was the first game he got me was Skyrim. And that's all I needed. It was for like a year and a half. Like I was just on Skyrim and I had like this elf and then I made like this Nord. I remember getting up to like level hundreds and just really exploring Tamriel. I mean, Skyrim and Tamriel. And, that is uh, so cool, man. Yeah, I, I had the whole map and everything of like the, the region, the map of like the world and stuff. And I really got into Skyrim. That's something that I'd like to actually do. I'd like to meet the people who were like responsible for Skyrim. I really would love to meet like some of the developers of like, yeah, I actually made that mission or like I actually made like that whole city, you know, I designed that. I'd love to meet some of those people. That's awesome. Dude. I, you know, I'm sure there's a way that like, you can do that. I'm sure that they, like we could, I'm sure that we could figure out who those people are and like listen to that. I'm sure that they have talked about them in interviews yeah. and you could like listen to those. We'll have to do some research on that because that could be cool to talk about. Definitely. Especially if you're so passionate about it. That's so interesting. So what, what were some of your favorite missions on that? Skyrim, some of my favorite missions. Um, I remember when I was in Imperial, I had to go, I had to pretend to be a chef for the Imperial um, leader. And um, I poisoned his food. No. He, yeah, oh. I completely oh, murdered savage. the Imperial <laughs> leader. And um, that was a pretty cool mission because right after they kind of knew it was me because I messed something up. Had I not messed it up, I would have gone away, but I messed something up. They found out it was me and I just, I had to get away. Did you bowl? <laughs> I had to bowl, yeah, I had to just get oh, out of it. man. So had, did you have a character that was like good at sneaking or like good at stealing? Yes, I had, I had a, a uh, Khajiit, which is um, kind of like a leopard. They're like a cat-like being. And Dude, that's who I was. They're very sneaky. They're very sneaky. They're good at they're good at sneaking and just stealing. I loved pickpocketing all throughout Skyrim because it was just such a fun thing to do. Yeah, I definitely. I I think I had two save files. I so I probably put 
um, an hour into each save file. So like I, I, I did not play it as much as you, um, but I was also like playing other games. Like there's yeah. so many like, like games that like redefined genres at the time. Um, I'm sure, like, yeah. At that time, Skyrim was probably like, uh, like I'll play it, but it's like, I want to get back to like modern warfare. I want to get back to like, you yeah. know, it's probably so many things. Yeah, I thought it was really, because I had like two save files. I think I had like one as like a dark elf and one is the the cat and i remember the like when i did the dark elf the way at like the time that i just like set it down and didn't pick it back up again was i tried to steal something and i got caught and then they just like immediately like it was like a king or something he just like immediately beheaded me oh and i was like, God. like i can't pick it up after that <laughs> that was like yeah. i was like that's like i'm like that's done i'm done with it for me <laughs> I feel like that will happen, man. It will surprise you. That game will surprise you. I actually, I the reason that I didn't, the thing that took me out of it that I think that if I kept playing it, I would have like fallen so hard into it. But like what made me like kind of like, what pulled me out of it was the, the fighting mechanics. Mm. I didn't like just pressing trigger to swing a sword. Gotcha. I, I wasn't really, I wasn't really into that. It just made, it didn't feel like, because I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me. But like I have since since picked up games like uh, like Shadows of Mordor, uh, Assassin's Creed, and I feel like like if they had like done something like a little bit like that, to where it's like you have like maybe one or two combos, or like there's like some kind of like skill instead of just like button mashing, which I mean like I'm sure there is like as soon as like when you get further into it, but for me I was just like this is the same button that I use to shoot a gun and I swing a sword with. Yeah, and I was, I was, that kind of pulled me out of it. No, I feel that. I feel that. Skyrim is one of those games where it's like very programmable too. So I mean, it was designed to play on a PC. So like on a PC, oh. you just pull the trigger. You'd probably like choose what key you want to be your like hit key. I I really want to try the VR. I want to see what the VR is like. I've heard. I was gonna things. I was gonna bring that up because I think they just did it on like PSVR. Yeah. I have heard from like I don't personally know anybody that done has done this, but like I've listened to them on like podcasts or like other mediums. And they say that like playing Skyrim on like PSVR is like the, the coolest thing that they've ever experienced in VR. Really? I can see that because it's like a world already that's really easy to get lost in, you know, playing it. Like yeah. maybe games, imagine actually putting yourself there, you know, through these lens. VR is something that like, right now the technology is just like the entry point is not there for me yeah, but it's, I, think, it's, I think once it's I become niche. like a professional and like I'm definitely like in a different you know place financially I think I can get into it and I think it'll be better off too because it's an industry that's like so you know it's an infant so it's, yeah, it's really in its infancy and I think that yeah we touched on that a little bit last week with like the Star Wars Squadrons which like if you had a gaming PC with like the pedals and the joystick and the VR like I don't think anything could beat that, man. But like the <laughs> entry point for that's just like the price tag is just so high. So high. Yeah, but on the on the VR thing with Skyrim, I heard that there's like things that like they programmed into the. Uh, I don't know if they like did it since they released it for VR or like you just did it and like you can only see it through VR. Is like the scale of everything because like everything has to fit on like a TV screen. Right. But like I guess that they like because like it's not restricted by that in VR that like you can see like this like the scale of everything is actually the way it was like programmed like originally programmed originally intended. So we're like even though like you still kind of get that when you like look around with the joystick like the for your thumb on the joystick like you still kind of get that but like your screen isn't moving like so to say. So like if like you could like look at like look down at your feet and then like look up in like a building you could like see the ceiling yeah you, i know you could you could do that but like i guess the scale is like totally off realistic if if you're in vr and it'll like really capture like the actual you know breath of the world yeah it's a huge world it's you know the 3d rendering can never fully capture it and you know i actually like kind of just it's awesome this is awesome that it like happened organically but i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it back around to the price tag man because you were just kind of talking about that. I really wanted to talk about like the accessibility in gaming. Um, Cause like, like you said, man, it, it's just so expensive. And like, I'm at a, a place where I just dropped like, I just dropped like almost $400 to get like a switch and like two games. Damn yeah, man. And like, I mean, like I'm definitely like, I'm excited to like put some time into it and like play, but like 
that's like especially like right now like that's like so privileged you know what i mean and like like i i hate that the medium that we just happen to like which is video games is just so expensive you yeah. know what i mean and it's like there's so many people that i feel like i couldn't like connect with over these like stories and like the message and like the art of it but then it's like oh like if you've never like if you didn't grow up doing it like you like it's kind of like a hefty price tag for you to be like oh like like if you're like just somebody that's like never played before i guarantee there's a game on the switch that you would love but then yeah. it's like you gotta spend the money for it and then it's like and then you have to like figure out which games are for you if you've never done that before never like even remotely gotten to the hobby there should be a way to like because i know that there are people myself included like right now the next gen consoles are about to come out and i'm thinking i'm like what am i going to do with my ps4 should i sell it am i going to just put it in the living room i already have an xbox one as well there should be like a system where people who are in need of these entertainment systems can come out and say like hey my household could use one like if someone is willing to like give one up i don't know it should be like a system like that yeah so and it's almost like like connect people yeah i mean who knows maybe we could even start something like that somewhere down the line you know probably you know because i i definitely i i can see i'm, I'm sure there's like some kid in my neighborhood within a five block radius who like would love to have a ps4 but just can't afford it and yeah and like that really sucks because this has nothing to do with him you know like yes yeah. Like that's just about like people around him, you know, especially if you're a kid, like just having something like that, it's just so privileged to be able to have those, you know? Right. Yeah. So I was thinking that we could do a mobile game. A mobile game. Yeah. I was, I actually, I heard about something. I heard about a game and it's two ninety nine for your smartphone. Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. So I was, and like, there's also like with gaming, like it takes a lot of time. You have to put a lot of time into it sometimes to like really enjoy it. And this game is like two ninety nine, and it takes like forty minutes, like give or take, like forty minutes to an hour. And I was thinking that would be something cool that we could both do and then bring to the podcast. So you're saying like play a game on the podcast? No, 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 not not on the podcast. I'm saying like we could do it, and like if somebody like was listening that didn't have like a system, but they had like a phone, they could yeah. play it. And that, I think that would be a cool way that we could like, like connect the people that are listening. Hello, people that are listening. And also like, you know, cause like I have a lot of friends that they might listen to this and then they're like, they don't have like a system or something. And I was thinking that'd be cool if we could like make it more accessible in our medium and our platform, we could do like a little like 299 mobile game. Definitely. I think that sounds like a good idea. Are you down? Yeah. All right, man. I think we should do it. So this mobile game is called Florence. Florence. And Florence. And yeah, you can look it up on the App Store. And I'm pretty sure it's on Google Play as well. And it's like $2.99. And I think it only takes like 40 minutes, 40 minutes to an hour to play. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, so it's it's spelled F-O, or I'm sorry, F-L-O-R-E-N-C-E. And it's just a story about life, two ninety nine, And I think it's about a girl starting a new relationship and it won the mobile game of the or it won best mobile game um in a in the bafta game awards for 2018 or 2019 and the game of the year mobile game for 2018 i mean like if it won awards two years in a row i figured it might be a good one to to check out and i think it'd be cool because like it's like i think that like mobile games get dismissed you know and like the medium but like at the same time it's like still a piece of hardware and it can still be a mess like a medium with the message so i think that would be cool to check out the um the developer ken wong yeah he's an interesting dude i'm reading his thing over here just about him yeah and i don't know it's uh it's really interesting puzzle based game 299 yeah it looks like it's by anna pern games llc Annapurna Interactive. It's a big download. It's a 1.3. Yeah, I didn't, didn't realize that. Games also take up a lot of space. So this is just another par for the course here with <laughs> uh, so The most really... taxing thing on computers is just visuals. Just putting visuals on them. That's cool, man. I, I'm excited now. Then we get two games that we could, we could both play together and talk about. Florence yeah, and Zelda Breath of the Wild. I don't know. Now I'm looking. I don't know if I have 1.3 gigabytes available. So I'm probably going to have to delete some stuff. Do some 
storage management, which is a pain in the ass. Storage, very, also another important part of gaming, storing all of the data that games are. It's a lot of data. Do you have an external hard drive? No, not not anymore. I use the cloud for a lot. Try and use cloud for a lot. Do you have to pay for that? Yeah. PlayStation? Yeah, you do. No, I also thought that there was like a way that you could put like a memory chip in the Switch. Yeah, you can get an SD card. What I did is I got an 128 gigabyte SD card. Oh, I see the slot now. I was literally looking all over for it and I couldn't find it. But. Actually, there's 256 gigabytes SD cards. Mm-hmm. If you want, if you want to buy those to put in your Switch, that that'll be huge, and that can save at least like two or three full size games. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna do that just because like I was just kind of like playing in bed and i was like yeah i don't really want to get up and change my game card (laughs) yeah yeah so definitely be wise about which ones you choose you want to download i feel like mario kart is one that like you have to download you keep downloaded on your switch and like smash bros those are two that like i keep downloaded on my switch because it doesn't matter if i have internet or not i can play them because they're fully do you need to have internet to play it if it's on the cartridge um no, I'm sorry. If you don't have the cartridge, you need internet to play them if they're not fully installed on your device. Okay. Gotcha. I'm also I so I have I have two games that I'm thinking about picking up next. Um I'm thinking about picking up Smash because I really want to play with you. And I think like like I said earlier, I've really been thinking about some fighting games, man. I have <laughs> never really gotten into them and I just I feel like I just got the bug, man. I got the itch to do it, and I've never really had that before. So I would be really excited to play some fighting games with you. You're going to love Super Smash Bros., especially when we st- like we can play together because you can play online with random people. You can play. Oh, I'd know. get my ass kicked, I bet. <laughs> um, yeah, there's some people that just play too much. Um, yeah, I mean, like, with anything. But, with anything. But who are your favorite characters? Super Smash Bros. Smash. is one of those games where, like, you'll go online and you won't be able to touch the other person. Yeah. Oh, that's – how do they do that? Is it just, like, grabbing you or – just get They get so good at, like, understanding the movements and, like, they've played it so much that they know what the movements are and, like, what characters can and can't do, you know. I mean, that's cool. That's a learned skill, I guess. I mean, that's why they have, like, the competitions – yeah and like that's um i've i've always been a fan of like professional gaming ever since early on i started playing uh game battles because my uncle used to play for money on call of duty and so if he's playing for money like that's i gotta get to that level you know Mm because he was always like five years older than me so he's kind of like an older brother and i was like i just can't let him leave me behind you know um so i started playing professional gaming and yeah. it was on Black Ops, Call of Duty, Black Ops 1, and Black Ops 2. And, yeah, I, I used to play, like, 2v2s. I had a partner, and we would play online and just, you know, play other people. For play tournaments time. and stuff? Yeah, play tournaments and stuff. Did you have any friends that played game battles? I'm sure you've heard I don't, of them. I'm Not anybody that, like, I knew. I mean, I'm sure I did. Like, I'm sure that I know of somebody that played. I think that I had somebody in my fraternity, I think his little brother, played, like, professional Rocket League for a little bit ah that's a big one rocket league is a really big one there's a lot of money made on that one rocket league super smash bros has always been a big one on game battles yeah you know call of duties call of duties are big ones on on game battles um just that level of competition it was always like once i learned about it i just couldn't stop chasing it and trying to be there you know, when when the game really interested me that much, like Call of Duty, but now I kind of lost that interest with that. Yeah, it's easy to it's easy to lose <laughs> lose your interest in like FPSs, man. Yeah, I really, I actually, I think that we were talking about it like one or two episodes ago, just like feeling kind of underwhelmed with everything that's coming out, and like, it's like yeah, it just feels like the same things. Like and that's because it is. I, I think the business model is just becoming more transparent to people, and and people are just getting a little tired of, of the model i think they know that too and they're they're probably they're thinking of ways i think that's why they're coming out with the next gen now they're gonna have the first next gen call of duty is a black ops which i think is a great it's a great thing to do because you have zombies and you have multiplayer so even if the multiplayer functionality is not as popular they can count on people playing zombies for 
you know, years from now or a year from now. On that have, you, have you checked out the, they actually, they have like a little bit of a demo on the modern warfare right now where it's like, so I don't know if, I don't know if you knew about this, but. Zombie they, voice player. Kind of. Yeah. So they, yeah. they, they switched it up to where the gulag is not going to be a thing anymore and you're going to get respawned as a zombie. And like, they're like, quote unquote, doing like a, hol- like a Halloween event. Um, but it's like, it's like the way for them to beta test it pretty much you know but it's have you played that at all have you played as a my uncle has played it and i've seen it it looks really fun it looks yeah. really fun and i love that they're doing things like this it's just it's exciting it's exciting to see what's to come that's cool it actually it feels really fresh i i was kind of i, I played a little bit this past weekend probably only like 20 30 minutes i probably only did four or five lives but the first time i killed like three or four zombies before I ended up dying. That was really cool. Um, just because, like, I'm like, oh, I'm playing Warzone, but I'm killing zombies. And that, yeah. was, that was cool. That actually kind of, like, really spooked me because the first time I saw a zombie, he was, like, I, like, had, like, an SMG and a pistol. And I was like, oh, my God, like, the match just started. Like, somebody already died. Like, how's this? <laughs> I feel bad for them because I definitely fucked them up. <laughs> um, what is it like? Is a zombie... Are they fast or are they slow? Oh, dude, they are so fast. And like you can jump like, so like if you were like chilling on like the second, third floor of a building, like a zombie can jump that high. Oh shit. And just get up there and fuck shit up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you hold the, hold the left trigger right now. And that allows you like the longer you hold it, the higher you jump. And like, I mean, like you have to like, there's like, you have to wait a second before you jump. It's also like, it's kind of cool. You really have to, like, if you, because if you kill a zombie or if you kill, like, a real person in Warzone, you really got to keep your head on a swivel. Because, so, like, I, like, I'll, I'll walk you through this, something that I had. So, I was, I was playing um, with the teammates, with some teammates, and I, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I, like, didn't get the memo that they had already dropped. So, I, like, dropped a little bit further away. Um, and then, like, I ended up, like, killing one guy and then, like, a zombie killed me from behind. Like, I could, like, hear him. And then, like, so I was a zombie. I, like, got back to life and then this is where i found out that you could be a zombie twice so then i was then i was like kind of um just like so i was doing this with random people because i didn't really know how it worked yet and then we like all went to stadium and they got to the the top of stadium i i had a heart sensor but like i didn't have a headset so i couldn't tell them i was like i definitely saw somebody like on the ground floor so i was like or like i thought they were on the ground floor so I like went and I was like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna fuck this person up. Oh, we also had a UAV. That's how I, that's how I knew they were on the ground because I knew there were people on the roof and they went to the people on the roof, but I went to the person on the ground floor and I, I ended up killing him. Um, and then I saw somebody else. And then, well, then I saw a zombie and then I killed the zombie. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like my heart was just like racing. Cause then I saw somebody else and then I killed that person. I like followed them and killed that person. But then I was like, just trying, then I was like, I was like, my ammo was gone. Like my armor was gone so I was like reloading and doing that stuff and then they killed me because like when you're a zombie you can like you can like you pretty much drop down like right where you were and since I hadn't really moved because I was like using using my ammo box and like refilling my armor he like was able to like he was able to to drop down drop in as a zombie and then fuck me up as I was right there Uh, wow and like he did it viciously so (laughs) um but then I then I came back as a zombie and then I was able to like, so that's when I, you, I figured out that you can come back as a zombie or like they might change this, but like in this like beta testing phase, they're doing it. So like you can come back again if your teammates are still alive. It's like my teammates were still alive. So I like went and got two syringes and I was able to like drop back in and I still had all my same weapons, which was cool. They, I, I feel like they might change that, but then they also might not change that. Cause like, it's, it's, it's weird. It's a different, it's a really different vibe. It's not necessarily as hard to like kill people with like like people with guns, but like every time I died, I died from a zombie. Except for when I was a zombie. Oh man, took away from Warzone. Right, and it's just like looking out for looking out for zombies. Yeah. But it was also like it's it's also like in nighttime, so that kind of adds something else to it. And like adds, yeah. I if if I were if I were somebody that hadn't played it, I would I would switch my Warzone classes to like the holographic scopes. Cause I, I don't have those set up right now, like for my war zone setup. But then I was like, after playing it, I was like, it, cause like it's dark. So like, if you just have like a normal scope site thing, like that's not holographic. It's, it's not as easy to see, but like with the holographic, it's definitely easier to see it. Cause it's at night. Like it's like night, if that makes sense. 
I'm excited to get back into first person shooters when when next gen comes out because I don't know it just seems now like they there's a lot of like updates and just just playing around with it you know you know um and that that always has been a thing but prior there just wasn't as much creativity I feel like yeah because it was just like everybody wanted to make like the super hyper realistic like first person shooter yeah I'm kind of like I'm actually kind of glad that there's um like that there's zombies I was kind of like like when we talked about it we were feeling kind of burnt out on that one episode I was kind of just like I don't know if I'm gonna buy it the new one because like I just spent um like 60 on this one and then I spent like 60 on like battle passes and I was like I don't really know if that's what I want to do because I feel like it's like I'm like it's just coming out like I just spent like uh the money on the battle passes but anyways I think I'm gonna do it because one of the problems that I've been having that I've noticed that I've been having with first person shooters is I don't know maybe I'm like maturing or getting old maybe they're the same but like I don't like the like just like the super violent like gory like aspect of that like because like now I'm like oh like you were like killing like tons of people on this and I don't know maybe that's just hitting me different no I definitely feel that as well like because especially being someone who's played first person shooters I never had my parents to like playing at like 13 14 my parents were never like hey Brandon you shouldn't you shouldn't play a game where you're like killing people to them it was just they didn't even think about that but like for me growing up and maturing I kind of as I became more self-aware and a little more conscious, you know, I kind of noticed the effects that it was having on me. Yeah, definitely. I'm just playing those games over and over, like night in, night out, over and over. It was, it was like, uh, it was an addiction. It was, it really was an addiction, you know, and, and it makes me think a lot about like um, porn addiction, um, which yeah. is another addiction that plagues males. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you have an addictive personality, you should definitely know that about yourself and keep yourself in check. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I guess the theme of the podcast, man, like, there's so many resources that, like, can get you help. Like, I mean, I'm, you know, I think, like, I speak for both of us and say, like, we're both really lucky that we were able to, like, realize those things. Yeah. You know, they're, like, both, like, porn and, like, violent video games, like, they're addictive, you know. And it's awesome that we were able to, like, be like, yo, like, maybe we should not do this right now or take a yeah. break or you know and like I definitely having like male friends that are all going through the same thing like that definitely really helps out too and like if you're struggling with that you know like hopefully we'll have a community you know with this podcast and that's something we're trying to create so definitely feel free to like reach out with that um you know, yeah. everybody struggles with that you know that's it I think that might be that might be a good place to end this on man I think so as well man and we've touched on some really good points on this podcast gotten to talk a lot about switch that you just got we got to talk about next gen man we got to even like kind of launch things for the next episode with florence and breath of the wild you know looking yeah. forward to just touching those titles before the next yeah i actually and i'm like we're have we're doing another episode this week which is cool because i actually have like a list of things that i wanted to talk to you about and i didn't even didn't even get to them ah uh, that is awesome fun. That's good. That means it's, this is really good stuff, man. We have yeah. a lot of content. Yeah, that's awesome. That's working out. I actually, um, I, I'm definitely cool to like end this pretty soon, but I have a huge, I have a huge backlog of games that I'm playing through right now. Really? Tell I've me. Got, I've got quite a few. Wow, dude, I, I literally have so many. Uh, it, I mean, it feels, it feels overwhelming, but so I have, I just got, like when we started the podcast, I got No Man's Sky. Uh, I haven't really put, Oh, you, you broke up. I didn't hear you there. No Man's Sky. Where, that sounds familiar. What is that? Yeah, so that's like the the one where it's like it, like the system like generates a new world. And like if you jump into it, like everybody's going to have a different experience because like it's all like automatically gener- generated by the system and the software. And like so like, oh, it's cool, man. I, I really want to, I don't, it's kind of a lot to get into. So I don't really want to get into it right now. Yeah. But yeah, like that's, so that's like a big game because it's literally infinite. And I, I put a, put about two hours into that one. Um, but then I just didn't pick it up. Um, cause like right, right when I was like feeling like overwhelmed with just everything and like overwhelmed and underwhelmed at the same time, there's also like some context, like shit's kind of going down in the world right now. So like, that was also like the weight of the world was kind of getting to me at that point. Um, which I mean, it's gone to everybody during quarantine and COVID. Um, but like, it just kind of like hit me then. So then I kind of like set that one aside 
And then, yeah, I got Breath of the Wild. Got some Mario Kart. I don't even – I think I've played every circuit at this point, but I'm still <laughs> figuring out who I'm playing as. I have – this – oh, this is embarrassing. Um, but I'll, I'll say it. Um, <laughs> I bought – Assassin's Creed 3 because I've never really gotten into an Assassin's Creed game and it's embarrassing because I already had it <laughs> I had it on a disc and I bought the digital download dude it's happened to the best of us we've oh. all had a situation in gaming where you just like you just take an L financially because of your you know <laughs> your hobby happens. man <laughs> it just happens so the reason that I I forgot that. So, oh God, it's a whole story, man. I'll, 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 I'll say this and then we can end it. Um, but I still have like a ton of more games. I haven't even talked about Tony Hawk yet. Oh man. Uh, I'll talk about that one in the next one. But so I, when I bought my Xbox 360, so un, unlike you, I actually, like my parents were like super against me playing video games and they like, were, like so against, um, me like playing like first person shooters and stuff and like i get that uh, yeah. actually i i don't really i i don't really talk about this very often but you know i think it goes well with what we're saying and like the message of our pod and stuff but i actually i had a cousin that i never met because they they got killed in columbine oh man that's so sad. that that kind of sucks and that definitely like affected our family and like my parents and how they like raised me and stuff. So like they were like very against me playing video games. Um, when I turned 18, I, I bought a 360 from my friend, Ted. So shout out to Ted. He gave me a great deal. Shout out to Ted. <laughs> he got me, he got me a one. Um, and I got his, his old 360. It was cool. Cause we, I would always go over to his house and play. And like, I got one of his, I got, I got his whole setup. So I got his like good controller and then the shitty controller that I always played as when I was at his house that had like the dog chew marks in it. Oh man, we played so many hours of like zombies and stuff at his house. So definitely shout out to Ted here because he also gave me like a huge deal on like the used 360 games. Um, and I bought like he would he said it's like I'm just gonna sell them back to GameStop. They're they're gonna give me like ten bucks. So he's like five bucks family special. Like five bucks for any of my games. Um, that I had and I bought a whole catalog from him some of them like aren't backwards compatible some of them I've just never even played um but one of them was Assassin's Creed 3 and I was like I I definitely like I definitely played it um so I had it and I played it and then like because you start off as like a British officer in like the colonial um I maybe not maybe maybe I'm imagining that maybe that was a dream I had but I, I think, think you start from one. what i think i remember playing ac3 and like you start off something like that you start off somewhere like that in the lab and then they send you back oh god i hate that whole thing that they do there like i not to get into that right now but like why can't you just commit to like like why do you have to have that like sci-fi thing like that whole like just for storytelling like the writers when they paid the writers they just couldn't like they couldn't get out of that like I have to tell the story. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's my that's my biggest thing about. I that's why I, I have never really gotten into it. That just pulls me out like that. Like if I'm like in a world and I'm like fucking somebody up and like I just assassinated them and then I get like pulled back to the modern time. I'm like, uh, I don't know. It just I I mean like that's that's the whole franchise. So I'm not gonna like. Right. It's a part of the story. Part of the story is um, maybe I got to play this one to like really see how I feel. But like, yeah. anyways, so then I was like, I was sitting there in my, in my bed one day and I was like, I really want to play some Assassin's Creed right now. And I was like, I really just want to fuck some, some, fuck some people up and assassinate them. And I looked at my Xbox and I was like, I swear that I had got like Assassin's Creed 3 on like a, like a games for gold, which they still do that. I don't, did you know? Did you know about games with gold? Have you heard games about that? With gold, yeah. I'm I'm loving what Xbox is doing right now with their their whole Game Pass and mm -hmm. it's um it's really to prepare for this new next gen. But continue, please. Yeah, dude. Oh, we could get into that too. We could yeah. go down the rabbit hole on that. But I'm, I think I might get an Xbox next gen. Really? You are you are you thinking about release date or mm. 
waiting a bit, waiting for some of the like the Knicks and, and stuff to come out, and then getting one. Well, oh god, I don't really want to get into this right now. But <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that I think I'm going to. I don't know if I'm going to get it like at release. I might like wait for the initial like like hype to be over, um, and then order one. Um, but I think I'm going to get the Xbox because. Or the I think I might even get the the better version of the Xbox. Okay. Because I can play my whole library on it. Mm. Like I could play my whole library as it is, and I'll be able to like some of my games that make my Xbox wheeze. It will actually be able to run them. No, oh, yeah. I won't have to wait as long on. to like play them. That would be cool. But I have a question for you. Since you're since you're going for the higher end Xbox, are you going to do anything for like the 4K functionality? Because that's something that I was thinking for with the PS5. Um, right now the HDMI ports that I have are not, you know, capable to handle 4K at 120 hertz. So are you going to yeah. do? That? Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. The re- the the selling point for me to get. The, the more expensive one is the, the disc because I have a couple like, so like if you are looking to save some money as a gamer, you can, sometimes you can get the discs used cheaper. And right. sometimes like, so like, like No Man's Sky, for example, I got it for like 20 bucks from Walmart, like new, but I had to get the disc. And I was like, shit, 20 bucks. Like, hell yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, but like, yeah, I have the disc and I don't really know. Well, yeah, I, if you're looking to save money, discs are a good option. Um, as far as the 4K, my, I don't think my TV could even do 4K. I've had my TV for about four years right now. And I was actually looking at it today and I was like, hmm, it looks a little small. I could probably upgrade, but I probably won't. I see this is, I'm, I'm just in a, such a weird spot right now. Um, Cause I need to like, my phone's old. My shoes are not old anymore. I just got some. I mean, like I have like work shoes, you know. Yeah, but your um, shoe game is up. <laughs> a little. My shoe game, my clothing game is a little bit up. Just got the switch, but yeah, I need to get like a new phone. I my audio on my TV is getting a little raspy, so I think I need to buy a sound bar. Which mm. are only like a hundred bucks, but there's also Christmas coming up, and oh. I live far from my family, so I'd have to like buy the plane ticket and presents so it's kind of one of those and then like the new console comes out in like november so so here's the thing here here's my here's how i like really feel about it i don't think there's very much coming out at launch and like xbox specifically is like like game preservation and like library preservation so like that's like we have like the game pass thing like so many things are backwards compatible that that's why i think i'm probably going to get the xbox first but then I also, like, I feel like I've been cheated, like, not being able to play all these PlayStation games. So I think I might wait for a game that I, like, like really want to play for the PlayStation and then get, get one of those. Man, I've always been an Xbox person since my dad got me that Xbox. Um, and then I had the X-Bone, and I don't know, I got a PS4 from... Cause I was just bored and uh, I just wanted to do something different. I got into the PS4. It was this one title, man. It was the amazing Spider-Man, <laughs> the amazing Spider-Man. And it, it's coming out for the next gen on PS5. And it looks so, looks so good, man. I'm so stoked for that. I can't wait. And God of War is also coming out again. Have to play. Did that. you play the last one? Yeah. I love that. love that title. I heard that one is like a really cool message. It's also my dad's favorite game. So, you know, I kind of have to have to. Kind of have to love that one. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. I'd love to talk to you more about all of that. Dude, we have literally so much video game stuff to talk about. <laughs> we have so much content, just a lot, you know. Yeah. That's, I think that's why we started this. Yeah, that is. I, yeah. So, okay, let me let me finish this, this Assassin's Creed thing. I, sitting there, I was like, all right, I know I have played Assassin's Creed 3. Where is it on my Xbox? Because I thought I had digitally downloaded it from, yeah. I thought I had downloaded it with Games with Gold. And I like, look, so I have, I have like two Assassin's Creed's on, or well, I have three now. I have three Assassin's Creed's on my Xbox. I have like, I'm totally blanking on it, but it's like the ones that are in the UK. Mm. They came out like way later. They're shorter games. They're like the like, 
I remember they it was for a while like for a while their Assassin's Creed was making a few titles where it was like a little different like Civil War or like mm-hmm. you know those titles uh kind of so so these all these titles are after four they're after Black Flag but like before Odyssey and okay. it's like I think there's like one of them it's like Origins like I have like the one from Persia where it's like a Persian lady oh like the Spartan one no 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 um that that one's uh, that one's odyssey that one's um, odyssey okay sorry i'm mixing. no yeah i'm confused now too oh gosh it's gonna hit me later one. but anyways it, they they weren't the ones that I, I like i like started playing them and i was like man maybe this is it and there's like a british dude in it so i was like maybe so i like started playing it um but it's basically it's like it's way later like it's or not way later it's like the industrial revolution and like you go and like it's actually it's a cool mission like you go and like basically killed the dude that's like forcing all these child laborers to work in this like this like s- like steamy factory um but anyways i was like this is i mean like yeah this was cool but this is not the one that i wanted um and i because i wanted to play the one like the revolutionary war one um because i don't know that just like the the trailer for that is just so sick um because then like after playing i was like well man is this the one that i played anyways I ended up like it was on sale, so I only got it. I got it for like ten bucks, which is like nice. And I I bought it a second time, and I like I got saved a little bit um, for it being on sale. Um, yeah, and I haven't I haven't played it, but then like I was looking through my backlog of like just discs that I have, and it was on there. Oh man, so, got it twice, but I'm excited to check it out um, just because. Um, like I think that you know I I think that this is we kind of talked about this a little bit in this episode uh, but like I think I mentioned I had like I had like a like a itch to play like a fighting game yeah you did and I think that I had mentioned that like with Skyrim like what I didn't like about it was just like the the trigger mashing and I I recently played like Jedi Fallen Order and I loved that and I think I mentioned it like once or twice, but like the combat of that, like you have to like parry and block. And then like, like if you block, you can only take like block so many hits before like your stamina goes down. And then like, if you're like opponent, like is they're blocking, they have a stamina bar. But then if you parry, like you also do some damage and it gives you a chance to attack them. And just like that, like level of combat and there's like a skill tree. Like I just loved that. And I, I'm really itching for that in a game. And I don't really know what that is. Um, and Assassin's Creed is kind of like that. Like, there's a skill tree and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, maybe Spider-Man. Be- a lot like that. Dude, that is on my backlog, man. See, that's why I'm just like, with the new consoles, I'm so like up in the air. I want to preserve my catalog. Because like, I haven't beaten everything that I have. I also want to support Microsoft and what they're doing because they're trying to make gaming more accessible. And even though Microsoft is a huge company that has a lot of moral problems in the past and present, I still think that's the right way to go. And with Sony, I don't know. I think they're kind of just like being little shits with their <laughs> like exclusive titles. But like they have so many that I just want to play. Like Spider-Man, like I really feel like I'm missing out on playing that. Like there's like a couple others that I just want to play so bad. Dude, there's just so many good titles coming up. And, you know, I, I want to mention this too. With the next gen coming out, I think it's a good opportunity for, for all of us gamers to just – you know, take a step back and, and do some better accounting and, and just um, be a little smarter about, you know, our habit. And yeah, yeah, definitely, man, we really should. I think that we should definitely try and like, just try and make sure that we get games that are like better for us. You know, I mean, like, there's like so many resources now that like, you can do that with, like, you can see somebody like Twitch stream it, or like, you can watch some gameplay, like, after it comes out. You know, like, there's no reason not to, like, if you're feeling a little bit hesitant on something, like, there's no reason not to wait a little bit. And this kind of, like, brings in the last episode a little bit, like, with Star Wars Squadrons. I, you know, that game wasn't for me. I didn't love it. But I, like, I was just so hyped for it that I bought it at launch, you know. And I, if I was a little bit wish washing, you know, I could have, like, waited a little bit. And I'd been like, oh. Like, no. Yeah, but, you know, luckily I'm, I'm blessed and I'm, I'm all right in the financials. Not great. But I'm all right. We are doing the 299 Florence, which I'm excited. I'm excited. That's going to be a new experience for me. I've never, I've won. I've never played anything on mobile and I've never like played anything like so cheap too. And I think it's kind of like an indie developer. Yeah. So I'm, 
and, and let's use let's use the word inexpensive. It's a little. <laughs> oh, did I say cheap? It's better. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I literally, man, it's like ingrained in our like. It is inexpensive, and that's awesome. Like that's like a good thing. That go like you know we should like yeah that's awesome for you calling me out on that because like that's just like what I said. But like yeah. yeah, like I guess like that's just like the front of my brain, you know, if I'm on autopilot. But yeah, like definitely like cheap is not a good like it's definitely inexpensive. And you're, we're supporting an indie developer. Um, well, I don't know about Anna Prime. I'm, that actually sounds kind of big, but well, yeah, I'll do some I research. I think I've heard of them before. I think yeah. But even still, like, it's kind of like a new medium, like a 40 minute game, yeah. like on a platform that like, if you are listening to this, you can pick it up, like, regardless if you have a system. Right. I think this is great for us just to like open our, our, you know, our breadth of, of the gaming world. You know, it is, it is more than just these consoles. There is a whole PC gaming world out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. VR. Yeah, so much it's it's kind of it's it's awesome that it's like gotten to this point um but it's also like kind of hard to digest and especially like if you're like maybe if you're somebody that's like listening to this podcast to like kind of get a little bit more of the community or something like that like there are endless amount of video games so like you will never be able to play them all you're truly just recognizing that some are not for like some are just not for you and that's okay and like if you like and it doesn't and like a game doesn't have to be anything you know like it could just be like a game i'm assuming i mean like i'm assuming we're gonna enjoy florence but like just for the sake of the argument like it could be like a 40 minute mobile game or it could be a mobile game that like you just play on your like on the subway on your way to work you know or it could be like a, a title that you like grind out hundreds of hours you know or it could just be like a multiplayer online like there's so many genres so many things like and we're all different so it's cool that we can explore the new like new and different games the new age of gaming man we're really on in it like an exciting time for for gamers really it's, it's just everywhere so many choices so many options and and like you're saying, like we're really in a place where we have to like be wise about where we're putting our time in this space because there's just so much to explore, and and yeah, yeah, so definitely. Cool. And like it's it's definitely like another thing that we didn't really like touch on with like accessibility in gaming. It also takes up a lot of time, and like you should never like sacrifice like real world experiences. Real world. Know, yeah to, to play video games like if you're in a i think like i read or no I, I definitely heard this somewhere that like it was from like a psychologist and, and they like specifically studied like game gaming and i man if i if i can think of it i'll, I'll link it in the, the show notes but or i guess is that what people say in the, the episode <laughs> description <laughs> um i we've never done that so i don't really know what it's called but it's uh it's like a like a person that is like a, also a gamer she is like a professional and like a, I guess she's a doctor and she said that if you play more than 10 hours a week that's probably affecting your life outside of gaming oh man okay but I mean like like 10 hours is like two hours a day um in like the five day week and like I also like there are like weekdays like today I'm probably not gonna play any video games and just because like this is like this is taking up like the free time that I that I would have yeah which I mean like I'm and you got like school and stuff too so but like on the weekends, like sometimes I can play for two or three hours, like maybe four hours at a time. So like if you do that on the weekends, like maybe be like, hey, like maybe I should go for a walk, do some other yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely. Because if not, you'll, you'll kind of get off balance. And that's kind of what happened with me. You know, I mentioned earlier how my parents didn't really have like a very strict kind of regimen. And then I got to this point where I was like very free. I was spending my time almost exclusively on video games growing up and and then I got to a point where I was like wait hold up you know it was like I don't know I just I started working at 14 because it clicked it clicked for me it was like you know I'm lacking real world real world experience and then from there I kind of just started you know going the other route yeah, that's awesome man in a way from would you start doing at 14 Dude, I, I worked for this uh, government, there's like this government program where they would find kids jobs. And I worked for like this app developer and I was helping them, um, you know, just think of ideas. They were literally taking my ideas. <laughs> it was Super sick, man. really funny. Um, but yeah, kids have the best ideas because they're so creative and they're just like, they don't have these like intrinsic things in their brains. And that's where I learned doing that at 14. And then from there, I kind of just we met at Patagonia like a few years down the road. I, I started a little like business around that time, like 14. Um, I was mowing lawns. It was like the opposite of what you were doing. I was doing manual labor <laughs> and you were doing using your brain. That's awesome. <laughs> 
I'll let my parents lead. Just follow them because they're both engineers. So, you know, I was just like. Oh, really? I didn't know. Did you know my dad was an engineer? I, I didn't think you told me that. What kind? Uh, he's a civil engineer. Civil? What kind, are, what kind are your parents? My father is an electrical and my mother is a mechanical. That's awesome. That's super cool. My, I think I mentioned this. My sister, she's studying environmental engineering right now. Yeah, you did tell me that one. That one is really cool. Environmental, and that's like so current to environmental engineering. Are you, are you doing like uh, software engineering? Is that kind of where you're thinking going? I was thinking, yeah, I was doing like computer information systems, but now I'm, I'm going more towards like BBA route and just mm -hmm. my bachelor in, bus in business administration. And then from there, seeing where that, that goes. Yeah, there's a lot of jobs in that, man. If you're looking for an internship, I might be able to hook you up. I don't, don't hold me to it, man. I, I'm so dumb. <laughs> um, I've applied, you know, to internships at Google, Twitter, Facebook, um, you know, YouTube. I'm trying, I'm trying to get into these tech, these tech firms. I want to, I want to put my foot in there and yeah, just definitely, see, man. see some of the work that they're doing for myself. Definitely. Well, I'm putting out those vibes for you, man. I really hope you get those. I really appreciate that. And this has been such a great episode. We were going for like a fun, man. We go for like an hour, but we we are we've been here for a bit longer. I'm I'm yeah. proud. Yeah, definitely, man. Dude, we could talk about so much more too. <laughs> I'm excited, man. This I think that uh, I think these episodes are really coming together, and we're having a lot of fun with it, which is which is really what it's about. Definitely. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Have a great night. Likewise, you too, brother. <laughs>